Raising Kingdom Champions is brought to you by Julian Kula and Partners. Welcome back to Raising Kingdom Champions. I'm here with Pastor Elizabeth, and we are talking about Matthew 7, 16. You shall know them by their fruit. We had an interesting discussion just a minute ago about the ministers of the word, the darkness on the earth, the increase of darkness, and the challenge of light, and therefore just starting to have an understanding about how to how to how to bring this forward you know sometimes we want to use scriptures that are convenient there's a scripture that says um, ch um children um or it says honor your parents because there's a reward and and so we, we we like to use that but did you know parents there's also a scripture that says that parents do not provoke your children to anger the word of god is actually balanced if you seek out the balance so i hear the big noise about the ministers but there's also a responsibility to the hearers, to you who may not be called a minister, because trust me, we are all ministers. <laughs> We've all been given a measure of that grace. So every one of us, it's just that you may not be on a pulpit, but at your workplace, in the car, when you want to curse out someone in the traffic, um, wherever you may be, we all have, we're all ministers if you're a child of God in different capacities. So we need to understand that Yes, we as ministers of the word, we, we do have some challenges. And I'm not going to talk about any other minister. I'll talk about myself. We have, we have challenges because we are men. We, we are human beings. There will be a challenge. As much as there's a higher, um, there's a higher expectation and there's a higher, um, what's the word I'm looking for, Pastor Liz? There's, a, there's like a higher responsibility yes. uh, expectation matrix on us. But at the same time, I'll tell you that God has an expectation of his children. And we must understand that the fruit we're talking about here, the moment we mention you shall know them by their fruit, you just think about the teachers of the gospel. But let me tell you, I believe it applies to every one of us because the way the world will know us is by our fruits. And, and, and we need to break this down a little bit further, Pastor Liz, and try and understand how, how do we apply this? What's the application element of knowing people by their fruits? I'm, I'm thinking about, uh, I got born again 31 years ago. Jesus. When I turned 40, I asked myself, I've been born again since 88. I asked myself, 30 what years I've worked with Jesus, where is the fruit? Mm. Where I was so, in fact, I battled depression uh, some years back when I turned 40 because I asked myself, if I have walked with God all this time, right. where is the fruit? There must be fruit. Wait, you battled depression as a woman of God? Yes. I thought women of God are not supposed to be depressed. <laughs> we are not immune <laughs> from, from, from the challenges of life, yes. the realities yes. of decisions we make, yeah. uh, consequences we make of decisions. Yes. Do we make, yeah, bad, we make, do we make bad decisions? Oh, goodness. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we do. Yes, we, we, we do. do. Because I, I, I had an expectation when I was a teenager that by the time I get to 30 and 40, I should have done this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. But I go to 40 and I realize I had nothing. I mean, I had nothing to show for it. And I, I, there, there, was, there were some mornings I would just sit, wow. having not showered, having not combed my hair, just... No, no dressing, no makeup, nothing. Just sitting facing a wall for four hours, just wondering, what happened to me? Mm -hmm. Where did I disappear to? Mm -hmm. How can I walk with Jesus? Sacrifice so many things that, yeah. that, that a Christian is supposed to sacrifice. Yeah. And then 20 what years of serving in the church and yeah. doing what people call full-time ministry. I clock 40 and I have nothing to show for it. That was, I think, one wow. of the most depressing things I've ever been through. Wow. And, 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 and let's, yeah. let's just stay there for a minute. Yes, so yes. so you, you can serve God right. and have a lot of questions, yes, right? Yes. You can serve God and doubt everything you've ever believed. You are not exempt yes. because you're a servant of God right. from wondering if, did I miss a step somewhere? Yes. Did I miss his voice somewhere? Is this what it means to serve God? Is yes. this the pain you go through? Is this the loneliness you go through? I think the problem we're having in the church and in the clergy is that there's this Superman um, mm. syndrome that we all seem to have as though, you know, like nobody should see you weak. Nobody right. should see you hurting. And, yes. and the truth is, 
it, it does pain when you see members of your church leave you. It does pain when you see members of your church talk about you. It does pain. It pains when you see the media putting them down. It pains when, when so, so ultimately, if you're not careful to decide what stays in the mind but what goes to the heart is, mm -hmm. should, should, should be really the matters of life, you will find yourself compromising and, and getting to this place of question. But I think, I don't believe there's anything wrong with asking the questions. Right. God is a father. He's he not is. a tormentor. Yes. He's not an administrative judge that you just sit there and you have this crude element of a father. He's a mm -hmm. father. Right? Yes. Not a manager. He's a father. So besides anything else, the comfort we should have is that God has not given us that spirit so that we can go into that place of timidity and fear, but he's given us a spirit by which we cry out, Abba, Father. You yes. have to understand these yes. principles yes. so that you relate with him mm -hmm. as a father, mm -hmm. not as a headmaster. Because right. a lot of us relate with God as an authoritative, administrative figure, not understanding where his children. You don't need to run to the room whenever the car pulls up at 5 p.m. after work, fearing him. You respect God with an awe and a fear, yes, but not the fear that most of you have, which is a terror. That, that is not the fear that we should have for the Father. So just let's, let's, let's kind of, it's interesting you mentioned what yes. you went through. Yes. I thought I should take a minute to just oh, tell wow. people yes. that the children of God are not going to be exempt. We must stop preaching that the fact that you got saved, that all your problems go away. On the contrary, yes. <laughs> you are now uh, under attack. <laughs> yes. And the enemy is going to release every artillery he has on you. You will also go through trials and temptations. You'll go through testing. But stand, child of God, stand. After all these things come and go, you stand the test of time and see if God will not come through for you. Yes. I'm, th I'm thinking about um, what, what, what woke me up was a discussion with, uh, we had with God, God the Father, because I told him, you're the one who asked me to get into ministry at 23, mm. served you in a church for 17 years. At 40, I'm, I'm looking at the wall wondering, okay, uh, maybe it's because of the system of the world, meritocracy, what, keep, what you keep talking to us about. Right. I was looking for tangible evidence of my last 17 years. Yeah. But something God told me back then set me free. Mm -hmm. um, things like uh, one day I will give an account to him personally. Right. A and what I began doing, I, I took a notebook like this one, and I began listing down, mm. what have I done in 17 years? Right. How many people have I ministered to? Because I got into ministry to minister to people. Right. I went through files, I'm a teacher, I file my things. Who have I ministered to? How many joined the choir? How many did I train? Things like that. I could quantify some, but I couldn't quantify others. Mm. You can't quantify hospital visits. You can't mm. quantify the people, number of people we've buried. Amen. You can't quantify weddings we, we did. I didn't mean to um, say. <laughs> <laughs> I was yes. trying to say amen yes. about yes. the number of people. Anyway, the number of people. Yeah. There's number of people, but there, there's ministry that goes on that I wish the media could take time to 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 to, to sometimes have coverage of things like that because there's a lot that goes on that peop that is not shown but yet when you and I as men and women of God make a mistake yeah. it's all over the media but you know what um, <coughs> what was this man's name he wasn't even a, a we can learn a lot from people um, what's the name of the man that was with Julius Caesar um, one of his generals he said something profound I'm gonna remember his name he yes. said the good we often do yes. dies enticed in our bones but the bad we do lives long after us. Okay. I found out in life, oh, wow. no one will ever look for your good. Oh, wow. But make one mistake, yes. and that's <laughs> what will follow you. You know, I've, I've been in the marketplace. I, I remember, you know, you read things about yourself and say, oh, my God, are you serious? But it's, it's when you look like you've made a mistake. Mm. People love the juicy yes. mistakes. Yes. Um, yes. Because it, it just, it's just the nature of a human being is that it's as if we have a joy by putting mm -hmm. someone else down. That's true. I, I don't believe it's the right thing. And we need to become mature believers right. to rise up and start. Let's lift people up. It, it makes yes. a big difference when yes. we do. Yes. But for us, when we do good, 
our audience is one, right? Yes, our audience is Our one. audience is the Abba Father. Yes, we want to give an account to that one. <laughs> That's the one we, we should care about giving yes. an account to because yes. he sees all those things mm -hmm. and he's the one that will remember every one of them. That's right. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to now talk about fruit because I want to talk about the application. Okay. How do we apply fruit? And we're going to do that right after the break, Pastor okay. Liz. Right. We're going to take a few minutes of a break, mm -hmm. come back and now really tackle this okay understanding of fruit. Why was it so important to Jesus that um, to speak, because I don't believe he wasted any words. Yes. Why was it so important to talk about fruit? What kind of, what is this fruit? What are these fruits we keep talking about? And, 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 and what, what do they have to do with Christianity anyway? Let's do that when we come back. We'll be right back.